Okay, so welcome back to another video. So here today we have a following statement we want to prove and that is to prove that the following poly polynomial expansion, one plus x plus two x squared plus three x cubed plus five x fourth plus eight x to the fifth, and then add this infinitely so on and so forth, is equal to the closed form one mi divided by one minus x minus x squared. So you might be thinking, how do we actually get this, you know, infinite polynomial expansion? So like, how's, how are, you know, the um, terms like constructed to keep going so far to build up this infinite, you know, expansion and then to get to that closed form? Well, if you notice that these coefficients on the top closely, these actually represent Fibonacci numbers. And Fibonacci numbers are um, the way they're constructed is that you're taking the sum of two preceding terms. So we start off, for example, f of zero is equal to one and f of one is equal to one. Uh, depending on some older definitions, they actually start the series with f of zero is equal to zero. Um, but here we're actually gonna start with f of zero equals one and f of one equals one. That's why there's a little term called the shifted Fibonacci um, numbers. But if you actually take those sums, you get the next, you get your next term, which is f of two is equal to two. Take your previous ones to get your f of three, so f of one plus f of two, so one plus two is three. You keep doing this, so on and so forth, and that's how we get these numbers constructed. Um, so it's actually it's got some um, really nice properties, especially, but I'm not really gonna go into much details about it. But the way to um, solve this, or rather to prove this, is there's actually several ways to do this. You can actually, for one, you know, take this expansion of the series and then um, regroup them using, you know, like algebra with the whole, you know, commutativity. And then um, eventually as you get forward from there, then you can actually do a little bit of, you know, algebra manipulation to get, you know, the close form. And then another way that um, I'll be doing this is more of, um, we use the definition of, you know, generating functions of, um, you know, sequences. So this here, hence in the title, you'll see this is generating function of um, Fibonacci numbers, which says that um, generating functions are basically a way of um, encoding like infinite, infinite um, sequences of numbers by treating those numbers into like coefficients of, you know, into, an, into a formal power series. So in this case, by proving this, we'll be actually be using infinite sums. But um, also, we're going to be using a little bit of recurrence relation to the um, Fibonacci numbers as well. So I don't know if there's any other proofs out there. At least the ones I just list are the ones that I'm aware of. But if there are any other proofs, like if there are any m many solutions on how to prove the following uh, for the ones that I didn't state, then feel free to let me know. And if you can check those out yourself, then um, yeah. So let's just, let's just jump right in. So as mentioned, um, Fibonacci numbers, depending on some older definitions, can start the series at zero, and then hence the word shifted. So, um, well, with the way I'm going to define these numbers, hence shifted. So the way I'll put this is that we'll say that f of zero is equal to one, then f of one is equal to one, then f of two is equal to two. We simply just add these two numbers to get your new um, number. Then f of three, is equal to, let's see, that's three, then f of four is equal to um, five, then f of six is equal to eight, you know, you get the gist, so on and so forth. That's how the, we get the construction of Fibonacci numbers. And then the following um, recurrence relation, on how we get these Fibonacci numbers added um, is that if we start off with f sub n, we can actually write this as the sum of the preceding terms. So we have f sub n subtract one, add this with f sub n subtract two. And then this actually follows with the condition that um, n is strict is greater than or equal to two. Again, actually, um, depending on how you define these numbers, there's actually with the condition that n, they will actually exclude the equality symbol. So it's actually just a strictly greater than condition. But here we're gonna be using the um, greater than or equal to with the way we construct it over here. Let's actually call our, um, you know, our function, our generating function. So I'll call this capital F of x, then we just um, define this as, you know, this polynomial, polynomial expansion over here. So one plus x plus two x squared plus three uh, x cubed plus four x to the, f or excuse me, that's, that's wrong. Five um, x to the fourth, then add this with eight x to the fifth, and then, you know, keep going so on and so forth. But the way the, um, this is, looking at, again, the generating, generating functions of the Fibonacci numbers, we write this as a infinite sum. So we have the infinite sum starting from n is equal to zero of capital F sub n, and then multiplied by x to the power n. 
So what I can do here is let's actually do a little bit of a regrouping. So what I'll do is for re-indexing really, um, we're actually going to start off with the index at n is equal to 2. But to preserve this, to preserve this equality, we have to put down the um, 1 for the terms of n is equal to 0 and n is equal to 1. So we leave these two outside of our, you know, infinite sum expansion. So it's just 1 plus x, okay, and then add this with our infinite sum, then n is equal to 2 of capital F sub n and then times x to the power n. So now by doing so, um, since we have this recurrence relation over here, we're actually going to substitute this back into our, you know, um, the infinite sum back over here. Um, you'll see why, because this actually makes a little bit of, you know, doing a little bit of algebra um, interesting. So by doing so here, um, this is 1 plus x, add this with the infinite sum, then we just replace the, um, the f sub n with our recurrence relation over here. So this is capital F sub n subtract 1, add this with capital F sub n subtract 2, multiply by x to the power n, and if we just distribute this, then we have 1 plus x, then of course the infinite sum over here, n is equal to 2 of capital F sub n subtract 1, x to the power n, n, and then add this with capital F, capital F sub n minus 2, and then multiply by x to the power n. So let's actually split this into two different, you know, sums. Well, they're, they're being added together. So we're doing the sum for um, here and then the sum of here. So I'm actually going to switch to the black um, marker for this. So here we have now this is 1 plus x, then plus the infinite sum. n is equal to 2, capital F sub n subtract 1, x to the power n. And add this with the infinite sum again. n is equal to, so this is capital F sub n subtract 2, then x to the power n. So now let's actually, um, we're actually going to factor out an x for this term over here, this sum over here, and then factor out an x squared from over here. You'll see why we do this, because this is where the interesting part gets in. So we have 1 plus x, then plus x. Multiply with the infinite sum, n is equal to 2. This is capital F sub n minus 1 um, times x to the power n minus 1, since we just factor out that x. Then add this, so we have an x squared, factor out, then multiply with the infinite sum, n is equal to F sub n subtract 2, then times x to the power n subtract 2. Again, same thing again, we just factor that out. Here's the interesting part. So let me first write this down. So we have 1 plus x and then plus x again. Okay, so we're gonna get a little bit creative here. So let me actually write out um, what, I, what the next step is and then give a little bit of a discussion on what to do. So first we got the negative one, add this with f of zero, then x to the power zero. And of course add this with our, you know, seek our infinite sum. So n is equal or two of f sub n subtract one, then x to the power n minus one, add this with x squared then multiply by the infinite sum, n is equal to f sub n subtract two, then x to the power n minus two. So you might be thinking, where did this come from? So what I can do is we can actually do a little bit of an expansion. So we have the, this is the n is equal to one term right here. So I guess uh, this is probably good to label that n is equal one. So we actually put that n is equal to one. So that would give us f of zero and then x to the power zero, which we set that f of zero is equal to one. And then the exponent is just one. But to, you know, in order to preserve that equality, we're just adding a negative one. So at least it still matches the same of what we have from before. But again, this is going to help us do a little bit of more manipulation from here because now what I can now what you'll see is that just from re-index re-indexing this um, these two these two ter terms over here, we actually get the same infinite sum over here except now our index starts at n is equal to one. So one plus x plus x. Then we have negative one, and then add this with the infinite sum starting from n is equal to 1 of f sub n minus 1 to the um, times x to the n minus 1. Then add this with x squared. Then this is still the same thing. Um, infinite sum from n is equal to 2, f sub n minus 2, and then x to the power n minus 2. This is where though we're going to do a little bit of magic. 
well, it's not really magic because now you can pretty, pretty, you can probably get the gist of what's going to happen over here. Again, by doing a little bit of re-indexing again, you'll notice that um, if I just put everything in place back for n is equal to zero, so that means we have a f sub um, n and then x to the power n, which guess what? That is actually our f of x, our capital F of x, which we said that this is the generating function over here. So now in this situation, we can actually do that substitution. So let me actually put this, um, this is f of x after uh, re-index. And then actually, this is the same thing over here as well. We also get an f of x, capital F of x as well after doing re-indexing. Now we have a new um, simplified formula or with the expansion rather. So we have one plus x and then plus x again. Then we multiply this by negative one, add this with capital F of X, then add this with X squared times capital F of X. And so now it's um, smooth sailing from over here because again, we said that um, this whole thing was equal to F of X over here. So I should also put that F of X is equal to the following over here. So um, let me actually, you can actually simplify this out. So let's say we have one plus X, then plus um, negative X. So the X's will cancel each other out. Um, so now this is plus, what is it? X times capital F of X, then add this with X squared times uh, capital F of X. Okay, and so now we're actually going to um, finish this off by subtracting the terms so that all the F of X's are on one side and we just have the constant on the other side. So now, just by doing so, so here, F of X, then we subtract X times capital F of X, subtract um, X squared times capital F of X, and then we set that equal to one, factor out the capital F of X. So this is now um, X squared, or let me put it this a little bit simply, um, the way it's ordered. So capital F of X multiplied by one, subtract X minus X squared, and then this is all equal to one. And so just divide the one minus X minus X squared of both sides, and then we are done. So we found, um, we have actually just proven that the, um, the generating function is equal to this closed form. So capital F of X, which we just wrote this expansion, convert this into a generating function, is equal to the closed form as given, one divided by one minus X minus X squared. And so there we, there we have it. We are done with um, this proving this little statement over here as we want. And yeah, it's actually got some really um, good properties. Um, I also now just realized that, now I know I wasn't gonna go too much about discussion of Fibonacci numbers, but I realized that I actually did prove, um, well, it was more along the lines because the Fibonacci numbers have some really great properties with the relationship of golden ratio numbers, which actually, Bringing that back, it's um, I actually verified Binet's formula for um, Fibonacci numbers. So if you want to check that out, um, there's a link in the description below for that. But there's um, also I never covered this or never um, talked about this. But there's also the existence of Lucas numbers, which I haven't talked really too much about it. Um, well, I never talked about it in this video before until <laughs> just now saying that word. But um, you know, might be in the future I might cover um, a little bit of an extension of Lucas numbers and some properties about that. We'll see what happens. But that's all I just wanted to add now that I bring it up. So yeah, that's uh, pretty cool if you ask me.